These strange words you are writing on the board. Okay, this one's kinetic. <laughs> uh, this one's molecular and this one's theory. Theory. Explain what that actually explain what that relates to. Okay. I'll explain uh, the actual tenets in a second. Just like say what it's, it's about. Of the etymology? Yeah. The, of the words themselves? <laughs> Explains how so the idea uh, we touched on this earlier is that with a gas, it's not just this pure thing. It's made up of atoms that exist in kind of like points all around. And kinetic molecular theory says that there are molecules which interact essentially as point particles. And so they're all buzzing around, uh, being merry as point particles. And they're randomly hitting each other, and they're colliding, and they're bouncing off, and they're going in this random, unpredictable movement. And um, and if they're in a container, I, I was I didn't mean that, Jack. That's not, I was going to explain that in a second. I was just asking that you explain that it's the molecular explanation for pressure and temperature. Okay, that's the idea. I'm, I'm getting to that. Okay, because I was going to explain the five tenets of it. You can do the five tenets, I'll just explain <laughs> okay. the concept. Okay. You asked me to. Oh. You, you literally okay, asked Josh. me to. You can't do the okay. molecular explanation of pressure without like, explaining yeah, the Yeah, I have to give him like, the okay. reason for it, but uh, this works. This is. I don't think you can't do it without yeah. having This is it. necessary. Okay, should I just explain it? Shall we just continue? I, I'm going to explain this one thing, and I'll turn it over to you. And you can teach all of it. Okay. So the idea is you have all of these point particles, and there's this bouncing off, and they're going in random directions, everything like that. Um, and some will collide with the edges of the container. Um, and that causes pressure because there's a force that's delivered to both the wall and the particle for it to bounce back and change its momentum. Uh, and it gives us temperature from the kinetic energy of each individual particle all added together and then averaged. <laughs> I blame him. Um, and uh, it's just the idea of having particles, discrete particles, making up gas that lets us do, that, or do everything. Can you? All right. So there are five assumptions of kinetic molecular theory that make five. It... What? <laughs> I said five. He was just saying five. Okay. Just <laughs> All right. The first assumption is that gases consist of large amounts of molecules in continuous random motion. Random. Random. Random motion. So these things are there's a bunch of them in a space, and they're moving completely randomly, and they're always moving. And that's what a gas is, right? That's the idea of a gas. <laughs> Keep talking. Okay. I'm subscribing. Do you want to explain any more about that first thing? Um, so, yeah, the idea is, if you know the behavior, like the general behavior, how an individual thing works in a random system, then you can apply that to the whole system as a whole, and you get these really fancy discrete laws based on the average movement of everything. All right. The second assumption is that volumes of molecules, <coughs> or the volume of the molecules are negligible compared to the total volume. So basically, each of these things is really, really, really small, so small it doesn't even matter. Each of these little things flying around. This really is how you denote it. Right. And this, this is not entirely correct, because, you know, molecules like in reality. do have, yeah, in reality, because molecules do have volumes, but for the sake of kinetic molecular theory, we're assuming. And that's why it's an assumption. Basically, this is an ideal system. Yeah. Right. We're setting on ground rules for how we can do simple calculations about gases or, and mo molecules in general. And this one is talking about. So. And later on, Nathan will talk about how reality varies from this. Because he's cool like that. Yeah. How it deviates from the ideal. Okay. Or the third idea pessimistic. is that the very small attractive and repulsive forces between the molecules themselves do not exist. They have no effect on the actual movement of everything. So it's like saying very small forces have no effect at all. It's just an assumption. It's another assumption that we've made that's incorrect. But it's, it makes things easier. You know, it's like so, physics world. Okay. So are all... London dispersion forces, Van der Waals forces, and hydrogen bonding. So are all of between. these incorrect? Or uncorrect? So all of these things... The first one is correct. 
Uh, the second and third one are, are these. Okay, so they're not so, incorrect necessarily. Well, they're what you have to assume before okay. you can do any of your calculations or any of your predi predictions about gases. Yeah. And uh, like I said, real reality will vary slightly yeah, from this. Yeah, it's only a minor deviation. But for the most part, this is what's happening. It's like if you're on Earth, right? And I'm saying that everything above the ground is going to have a gravitational acceleration of 9.8 meters per second, meter per second squared. So, for so most it's things not exactly 9.8 meters per second squared because you're going to have a stronger gravitational attraction at the surface of the Earth than at the like Up than at like a sky at the top of the skyscraper, right? You can actually but go out and measure this. You're going to make the assumption that it's pretty awesome. You're going to make the assumption that it's going to be 9.8 at the surface of the Earth and at the top of the skyscraper. Same gravitational acceleration. Because right? it's a very small change. It's not true, but you're going to make that assumption. Right. Same idea over here. It's not necessarily true, but it deviates slightly from what is true. So we're going to make the assumption for our purposes at the moment for like general chemistry one. Okay. Yeah. So this is these are the assumptions of the basic theory. Right. Like this is the not just theory. us saying these are assumptions <laughs> we're going to make. This is scientifically things you have to assume. And you might get a question that says, what are the assumptions of kinetic molecular theory? Or which one is not an assumption? Or kinetic theory, for short. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so the fourth one is that while these things are flying around, they hit each other, right? Because they have to hit each other because there's nothing else to hit. So they will hit each other. They will transfer energy to each other. But the average energy of the entire gas does not change. So they, they, they hit each other and give each other energy, but the whole thing has the same amount of energy as long as the temperature doesn't change. Does that make sense? All right, yeah. and we're gonna ask you guys to rephrase all this in about a couple of minutes. So Tim and Shariq, Shazib, get ready. I'm ready yeah. What about those two? And Rishi. Well, they're not paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I have to accept every challenge that he gives me. Okay, I'm of so course sorry. you do. So the last one, the fifth statement. And Rishi too, because she's not just a video. <laughs> is that this is important? Average kinetic energy is proportional to absolute temperature. For any mass, its average kinetic energy will be directly related to the temperature. And later on, if you guys are interested, I will actually prove this mathematically. That's why temperature is important because it's directly related to the kinetic energy of the. Um, so well, mathematically, mathematically, what I just wrote is the um, average kinetic energy, so the bar over the top of any variable means average for your whole system, is directly proportional to the average temperature of the whole system. So if your temperature went up, what would happen to the amount of kinetic energy you have? Would it go up or down? Or stay constant? Up. So the idea is, if you heat up a sample of gases, you're going to all start moving faster, right? Yeah. Your kinetic you're, energy is an energy of motion. So if you're moving faster, you have more kinetic energy. That's kind or, of the idea. To phrase it differently, if you're heating something up, you're giving it energy in the form of heat. You're giving the whole system energy. Well, the energy has to go somewhere, and it goes to the movement of molecules. They're going to start moving faster. And that's why when you freeze something, the molecules move slower and slower until they form a solid. And, stuff like and guys, ask questions if you have any, OK? Because like, there are three of you. So that's pretty awesome. You can ask any question you want, and we'll be yeah. asked. So one, one, one to one teacher. <laughs> yeah, at this point, four, people have kind of trickled away. Amber already knows all this. But she, she already knows all of it. So she's like yeah. sitting back there. And I would like to remind the general teacher population that I have taken chemistry. But you haven't taken. Explain well, this. You taken AP chemistry? Well, I haven't taken AP chemistry. Exactly. Makes a difference. Yeah, I'm taking AP, so I know the basics. So do you know kind of micro theory then, Rishi? If you know the basics, then what's the pH of only Miss Barry went over. Nothing important. But that's what? It's true. Nathan, you film Rishi will teach. Weighted average. Yeah, Rishi will not teach. Take a challenge. Take it. Take it. What do you know about Van der Waals forces? You can teach everybody what those are. Here, I'll take a camera. Fine. Work in really 